Jesus told parables to teach us how to live like him. Let's open with a song called, I Want to Be Like Jesus. Welcome back everybody. We're continuing with our parable stories. And these stories are so important because when we listen to Jesus' teachings or parables, we will gain a better understanding of how he wants us to live. This week's parable focuses on mercy and forgiveness. As God's children, we forgive others not just once or even 70 times, but countless times, recognizing all of the love that God has for us and all of the times that God has forgiven us. In fact, demonstrating mercy to others can actually be freeing to us because grudges can weigh us down, but giving others mercy and love releases us. So let's listen to the parable of the unmerciful servant. Stories of the Bible, the parable of the unforgiving servant. This is Jesus, hey who is the Son of God and the Savior of the world. While Jesus was on earth, he taught everyone about God's love and healed people from their sickness. He did many miracles like walking on water oh, hey guys. and even raised people from the dead. One day, Jesus was talking with his disciples and teaching them when Peter asked, Um, Gira? How often should I forgive someone who sins against me? Seven times? Jesus said, No, not seven times, but seventy times seven. Then Jesus told a parable. He said, The kingdom of heaven can be compared to a king who decided to get his money back that he had let his servants borrow. While the king was doing this, one of the servants who owed him a million dollars was brought in. One million dollars, please? The servant couldn't pay, so the king ordered that he be sold, along with his family and everything he owned, to pay the debt. Wait, please! But the servant begged the king, please be patient with me and I will pay it all. 
Then his king was filled with pity for him, and he let him go and forgave his debt. But when the man left the king, he went to a fellow servant who owed him a few thousand dollars. Uh, hi? Come here, Will. He grabbed him and demanded that he pay him back immediately. Oh, wait, please. His fellow servant begged for a little more time. He said, be patient with me and I will pay it. No. But the servant wouldn't wait. He had the man arrested and put in prison until the debt could be paid in full. When some of the other servants saw this, they were very upset. They went to the king and told him everything that had happened. Then the king called in the man he had forgiven and said, You evil servant, I forgave you that tremendous debt because you pleaded with me. Shouldn't you have mercy on your fellow servant just as I had mercy on you? Then the angry king sent the man to prison to be punished until he had paid all that he owed. Jesus then said, that's what my heavenly Father will do to you if you refuse to forgive your brothers and sisters from your heart. What a cool Bible story. That parable really helped me understand more about how Jesus wants us to live. There are a lot of ways for us to apply that same teaching to our own lives. So let's watch the modern retelling of the parable to see how we might be able to live in the way that Jesus wants us to. Let's watch. Once there was a boy who got himself into a debt he could not pay. You might say that what he did was an accident, or you could say it was careless. Most likely you will agree that the boy's actions were, no doubt, a bit foolish. The boy paced and fretted, fretted and paced, trying to come up with a plan. Before he could think of a way to keep himself out of trouble, the front door opened and his father walked in. Luke. Hey Luke, how's your day little man? He was so shocked, he was nearly frozen where he stood. Finally, the boy decided to tell his father the truth. When the boy had finished his story, his father knelt before him, no doubt ready to announce a harsh punishment. Except, punishment is not what the father gave him. Because his father loved him, he forgave him and wiped away the enormous debt. So the boy went outside to play and continue with his life. After a little while, the boy decided to retire back to his bedroom. There he found a ghastly sight. It was his little sister drawing messy scribble murals all over his favorite posters. You might think the boy would show patience and kindness to his little sister. After all, his father had just forgiven him of a much larger debt. Sadly, that is not at all how the boy reacted. Whatever mercy his father had shown him, it did not make its way on to his sibling. The boy's father was disturbed to learn that the boy had been so cruel to his little sister. And all this after the father had shown him mercy for an even greater crime. The father reminded the boy of the enormous debt he had forgiven. He questioned the boy, asking, why wouldn't you forgive your little sister for this, an even smaller debt? The father had shown the boy mercy, and so the boy had no answer for why he neglected to show even an ounce of that same kindness to his little sister. Wow, what a great way to help us understand how Jesus' parable applies to our lives today. I think it's time for a song. Remember, one of the messages that shows up every week is that God loves us very much. This song is about how big God's love is. Everyone up, let's sing and dance. I'm feeling good, good, good in a crazy way. God's love changed me more than I can say. Can't keep this in, gotta let it out. Gonna tell the whole world that your love is spinning me around.
We are going back to our parable and trying to figure out what Jesus' teachings really mean. Let's start at the beginning of the story. This story starts with one of Jesus' friends, Peter, asking Jesus a question. Let's see what it is. It's in Matthew 18. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 70 times seven times. When I read this verse, I like to think of Peter sitting in the back seat of the car with his siblings, and Jesus is up front driving. Peter's brother, let's call him Jeter, is driving him crazy. He keeps taking his pens and kicking his seat, and Peter is doing his very best to not get really mad. Finally, he's so fed up, he does what we all do when we're annoyed, and he whines, Mom! Okay, but really he says, Jesus! And then Jesus turns around, probably a bit exasperated. Yes, Peter? And Peter asks how many times he has to forgive his other backseat dweller. He wants to know at what point he can just be mean back. And when he can snap, Jeter is driving him nuts. It's a lot like when we go to our parents and we say, Mom, Jeter has kicked my seat like a thousand times and I've forgiven him and I'm so sick of it. Then mom says, just keep forgiving him. You can stop when you've hit a million and five times and I don't want to hear it again. That's kind of like what this exchange was like. Peter wants to know how many times he has to forgive someone. And Jesus is like, Peter, really? Just always do it. But just like my parents didn't answer the question at hand, Jesus doesn't either. He goes into a full-fledged story to try and explain why he is saying what he is saying. The rest of the story we can find in Matthew. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. Hey, give me your candies. You owe me like a thousand bag of candies. Pay up or I'm going to take your dog, your TV, and your iPhone. Uh-oh, this guy doesn't have a thousand bags of candy, but the king just told him to pay up. What would you do in this situation? Let's see what the guy did. The servant fell to his knees before him. Be patient with me. I will pay back everything. And do you know what the king did? He was not only patient with him, he totally canceled out all of the debts. He looked at the servant, shrugged, and said, Okay, cool. Keep all your candies. You don't need to pay me back. Now, pause the video and think. If you were the servant, how would you react to that? Let's see how he reacted. Let's read on. When the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him. Please be patient with me and I'll pay you back. What do you think the servant did? Well, probably not what you think. He refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. So what do you think of that? Not great, huh? Well, the other servants didn't think so too. So they went up to the king to tell him about it. The master called the servant in. You wicked servant. I canceled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had the same mercy on your fellow servants? In anger, he handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he could pay back all he owed. So the master, who had forgiven the first servant's debt, was so angry 
that the servant hadn't extended the same mercy to the other servant, that he threw the servant in jail. This servant's unforgiveness was literally a jail for him. Jesus said that's what it's like for us too. We are all that first servant who is forgiven a huge debt by the Lord. When Jesus died on the cross, he forgave that debt for us. But we all have a choice to make. Now that we have been shown forgiveness, we have to choose what we want to do with others. None of us will make it out of this world without things happening to us. We will all have painful things happen and there will be people who hurt us, whether intentionally or not. We have to decide how we want to react. Do we want to show the same forgiveness and mercy to those who hurt us as the king showed to the first servant? Or do we want to treat others the way the servant treated the servant below him? I think we all know the answer to that question. Jesus forgives us and wants us to extend that same forgiveness to others too. Remember, this was not a true event. This was a story Jesus told. He told the story to remind us that God has forgiven us for everything we have ever done wrong to him. He has forgiven us a huge debt. God wants us to forgive people when they are sorry for the bad things they do to us. God forgave us a huge debt like the king in the parable did, and we should forgive others for their small debts against us. That's what the servant in the parable should have done. Let's sing a song about God's forgiveness. know that sometimes it's just really hard for us to forgive other people. There might be a time when people do really mean things to you and you have to be careful then about allowing them to hurt you again and again. You might forgive but still remember how they acted. Well God can help us with that too. 
we can go to him in prayer and acknowledge his work in our lives and ask God to help us when forgiving other people is difficult. I know it isn't always easy, but it is part of what God calls us to do and to love everyone. Let's pray together. Oh God, we give you thanks for the ways in which you love us every hour of every day. Help us to love each other like you love us. And help us to follow Jesus in all the ways you teach in the wonderful parables. Amen. Have a great week.